morning everybody first day filming on the GoPro 10 that I bought yesterday I've already had a camera just like this before so I know it's a good camera what's neat about this GoPro is that there's a screen right on the front here so I can see myself talking to you so I know if I'm in frame or not whereas the GoPro Hero 8 that I usually use doesn't have that I had a GoPro Hero 10 like this before like I was saying but it broke so let's try to be very very careful with this one my Hero 8 got stolen or lost. I'm gonna say stolen, but might have been lost. Anyways. Morning, Theo. <laughs> Look at that. You got a fancy GoPro. You like that? Not quite as big as that big one with the fluffy mic, eh? Yeah, show them your feet. Show them your feet. Those are very nice feet. Very nice. Wow, where did these come from? Did you make those? Are those yours? Because I swear, they were around here yesterday, too. We're getting company in a little bit. First dad and stepmom are coming over. Theo, Tampa, and Nana. That means we got to vacuum the floor. Well, we're going to vacuum them every day regardless, but especially for having company. I don't know how she does it, but my wife, Britt, keeps this house just immaculate all the time. Reminds me very much of my mom growing up. Very, very clean people. Clean houses. And no matter how hard I try, it'll never be as clean as she gets it. But, uh, you know, I try. I try. Vacuuming's pretty straightforward. You just suck up all the, the hair and dirt on the floor. I mean, that's pretty... I think I can handle that. I think. I'm pretty sure. I get under all the furniture. And to be honest, I do like things to be very clean. Like, it bothers me when things aren't clean. So I do try my best. But I'm just, it's just not one of my fortes. It's not one of my greatest achievements in life to, uh, keep things just immaculately clean. I like it to be clean, but it's a lot of work. It is. So that's why when I see guys driving down the road with a clean truck that you can eat off the floor, I'm impressed. Honestly, genuinely impressed. Like that takes a lot of work and effort. My hats are off to you guys. Oh, I'm almost done, buddy. Almost done. What is all the shouting? What is all the shouting? <laughs> you hungry? <laughs> Tell everybody. Tell everybody. I'm hungry. So hungry. <laughs> What's that? Well, it's the next day. I'm getting ready to leave. So we're gonna continue this as we get ready and tomorrow's vlog will, us, will be us going to Kenora. Brought the cooler home to test it. Works great, I'll show you. Got it plugged back in here in the shop. Drove from the house to here. It was two degrees when I left the house. It's now three degrees. So only, only lost one degree on the way here and I had it unplugged for a total of about 20 minutes from when I unplugged it, put it in the truck, got in the truck, left, got here, plugged it back in. Mm, 20 to 30 minutes lost one degree. So that's pretty good. It holds, it holds the temperature well. That means that I can feel comfortable uh, going from the shop to home with perishable foods in there and it'll keep it cool. I didn't know how well the insulation was if it had, like, obviously it's, uh, it's built for that. <laughs> so my review of this bodega cooler is actually, you know, five stars, five out of five. It's fantastic. Uh, it cools down fast. It's very quiet. It's running right now. You wanna hear it? Like, listen to this thing. 
very, very quiet. It has a, uh, a plug where you can plug it into the wall like I'm using right now, or a plug that you can plug it into the cigarette lighter in your vehicle, and it also has a battery voltage meter. It'll tell you right on here, that's the battery level of your vehicle. Obviously, I'm plugged into like, the wall right now, so it says full battery. But on here, when I turn my truck off overnight, it'll show me what my truck batteries are at. And I can set it for high, medium, low voltage protection. I have it set on high so that when it's in the truck and my battery level goes down just a little bit, it'll shut the cooler off or the fridge. It's actually a fridge. Shut the fridge and freezer off to protect the battery so that I can still start the truck. But it shouldn't need to do that because this thing will be able to run all night, no problem, on the battery. Because it keeps its temperature so well, I'm sure the compressor will barely even have to run at all. It depends how hot the night is, I guess. I really like it. I think it's a good purchase. I mean, if you guys are looking, um, where's the name brand? Let's check it out anyways. I would recommend it. They're not paying me to say that. So that's a genuine review. Pretty cool. So what I've decided to do is turn it into one big fridge, but leave the divider in there for now. I can take it out if I want. So in here you have the light at the front there. And I've turned both sides to stay at two degrees Celsius. It's probably what 35 Fahrenheit. So they're both cooling down to the fridge. If I want to, I can take this divider right out of here and take these baskets out of here too. And the whole thing can be one big freezer or one big cooler. I tested it out. It works great. It does. Both of them. And uh, I got the freezer to go down to minus 18 Celsius. Uh, the lowest it's set for, you can set it to go down to minus 20. But uh, uh, I had it plugged in for a couple hours at home and it went all the way down to about minus 18. I think I saw minus 19 at one point. I never saw actual minus 20, but you can set it to go down to there. I'm sure it can reach there if you leave it on long enough or if the weather outside isn't that hot. But I mean, it would keep stuff frozen at minus 18, minus 19. So I cleaned out my entire truck before we got going, which uh, took quite a bit. It's amazing how much junk you accumulate in there in such a short, like just like a year. There's all kinds of stuff in there that, oh, I thought I might use one day, never used it. So if I didn't use it in the last year, in the garbage it goes. I don't need it to weigh me down. I don't need it taking up space. So there's all stuff in the garbage. I'm still looking for my old GoPro 10 uh, extra batteries and charging box. I know I have it somewhere. So I know I had it. it had a blue lid. It'll be in the shop here somewhere. Somewhere. I'm not buying new ones and I don't need new ones because I have them already. I just need to know where they are. Batteries for GoPro 10. They're bigger than the Hero 8. Bigger batteries, so. Mm -hmm. I had them in the truck for the longest time and then finally I'm like, why am I keeping these in the truck? I don't, I'm not even using my GoPro 10. Because so I had a GoPro 10, it was a gift. And I was very thankful for that. And I, to be honest, I accidentally, it fell out of my hands while I was walking. It got unintentionally dropped. And it broke and I felt so bad. And I've never admitted that until right now, I think. But, uh, so I was using my GoPro Hero 8s until that got lost or stolen. Now I got another GoPro 10, I bought it. And now I need to know where those batteries are. Where did you go? Why did you leave me? I want you back. I'll find it yet. Okay, it's time to put the cooler in there and see how it fits. I loaded it full of food first. That was probably a bad idea. I should put it in there first. That's not bad. That's not bad. We got this. Ah. Okay, so you get some lights on in here in the back. So, it's working. I haven't had this truck running for a while, but the truck's not running, and it says that the battery's at 10.7 volts with this running. You can see that the battery power of the truck is not very strong right now. I've also had to turn the, the auto off to low instead of high, so it wouldn't run on high. So let's turn it back up to medium, see if it'll run on medium. Why well, yeah, not? let's turn it up to high. See, there's the L. Medium, high, enter. So now, high protection. So the battery level might be too low and it might kick off the cooler to save the battery. See the inside temperature of the fridge right now is three and the freezer is four. 
They're supposed to both be down at two. So far it's still going. Okay. When the truck is running, that should be at about 13 volts. It's a 12 volt system, so it's it's not too bad. Yeah, it's running. And I'm probably gonna have it right here because here I can open it, right? Get to my food. And if I want to, look, I have water behind there right now. I don't know if you can see it or not. Cases of water. If I move those, I could slide this whole thing underneath the bunk. Little update here. So I had it at high protection to protect the battery so that I can definitely start the truck again, right? It did shut off because the voltage is too low. The truck's been sitting here for a little while. The batteries have probably gone down a little bit. I like it that it shuts off so that uh, I can definitely start my truck again. So now it says it shut off. It gave me an F1 error code. The battery levels are, are at 11.9 volts. 12 volts is normal. So my batteries are actually doing just fine but it did shut off to protect them. Now, if it's gonna do that every time I stop, even though my batteries are just below 12 volts, that's gonna be annoying because I want this thing to run through the night. So the high protection might be a little bit too much protection for the batteries. I might need to go down to medium or maybe even low. I'll have to test this out sometime probably in the shop, uh, like here in the shop when uh, I have the time over the weekend, I'll leave it in here on low and just run it and see when it shuts off with, with nothing in it and then come back and see if I can still start the truck, even if it was only on low battery protection. So, didn't like it on high, so let's press settings, move it down to medium, let's try that. We'll clear that code. All right, so I'd, I'd have to do some research to find out exactly how much power this thing draws, but on medium protection, it's running again. Remember, without this cooler running, it was saying that I had 11.9 volts on my batteries. They're pretty much fully charged then, they're not and there's no problem with them but with this thing running right now and without my truck running it brings it down to 10.7 10.6 volts but remember this thing's also on eco mode and it won't run the whole time it'll just bring it down to the temperature that i asked it to and then it'll shut off until it needs to start up again so it's not running constantly like my other cooler was my other cooler was just one of those coolers with the fins right it's just constantly running and it doesn't actually refrigerate it just chills or cools i'm pretty excited to see how this works this whole trip here i'm just gonna see if i can get the water out of the way see i got my big costco water underneath there i'm trying to get that out of the way to see if this thing will fit under the bed but i think i'm gonna leave it here anyways because it's just me in here and it's just easier accessible to be able to get in there like that right okay so that's that does it then that proves it my measurements were correct i got my water all out of there you see it? The cooler fits under there just perfect. So if I wanted the extra space in the truck, I know I can put it under the bunk. No problem. But since it's just me in here, I'm probably, like I said, I'm going to leave it out here in the open. I have my desk, my desk, what I call it, out here anyways, where I have my computer on usually. So it'll just be underneath that. I can't stand there anyway. It's just me. So, you know, if I ever take diesel along again i don't know if i will i was really thinking of taking him along on this trip again i really wanted him to come along i miss having him in here but he's got a heart murmur now he's getting old he's got severe anxiety uh, and he's just he's, he doesn't do well in the truck anymore he doesn't eat when he's in the truck and he's just so happy at home with his brothers and his mom and theo now i just it's just best that he's at home best for him not exactly best for me. I mean, I, I need him here. It'd be nice to have him here. He was sort of like my, my support buddy, right? So I miss him a lot in here. And I know you guys do too. He was a big part of the vlog for nine, ten years. Now it is what it is. Uh, he deserves his retirement now. He's uh, He did his job as a support animal. An unregistered support animal. <laughs> for me, for a long time. And uh, you know, he deserves to be able to just relax now and... Enjoy his golden years. Enjoy the rest of his life. Hopefully he has several years left yet, but now yeah, he's got a big yard to run around in, brothers to play with. He eats well at home. He gets like gourmet meals all the time. Britt makes him all this special stuff all the time. He gets all these treats. He's spoiled. So it's better for him to be at home. Doesn't mean I don't miss him. 
But if I were to ever have a dog in here, I could. my point was that I could put the cooler under the bed just to free up a little bit more space here. Well, we're getting all blue ready for the road. We're gonna head off to Kenora right away and that'll be tomorrow's vlog. Got quite a bit of stuff organized. We've got the cooler fridge in the truck now filled with food. That was the highlight, obviously. And I uh, got this new GoPro I'm filming on now. This is the first vlog on this new camera. It's not the first time I've had a 10, but it is the first time I've had this GoPro 10. The GoPro Max will be the next upgrade, but we're gonna wait until we have the house for that. We spent enough money now. I needed a cooler because my other cooler was making my food go bad. And I'm actually gonna save money by having this cooler because I don't have to buy food at every meal, which is what I'd have to do before. There's very limited things. All I could really do with that other cooler is just keep my drinks cool, not even cold, just cool. So now I can actually have food in there and I don't have to buy food at truck stops every day to eat. So I'll save money, it'll pay for itself over time. Won't even take too long with the price of food nowadays. And then uh, I think we're all set now for the next year or so. It might even be two years before we can buy a new house. But uh, we wanna make sure we do this right. We wanna make sure that we have enough of a down payment that our monthly payments aren't going to be unmanageable. We'll uh, need to take into account future interest rates if they're gonna keep going up or if they're gonna freeze or if they're gonna go back down. They were unreasonably low for a long, long time. So I don't know where normal is. I haven't been in the housing market for long enough. I've owned my own house now for 10, 13, 13 years since 20, no. When did I buy that house? When I was 26, so about nine years I've been a homeowner. Nine, 10 years. So uh, I don't have much of a basis to, to uh, base my interest rate history on, right? Hopefully the truck runs well. It's been running really well so far, knock on wood. Uh, that engine's been great. It will need a rebuild, I'm sure, probably in the next few years. I'm hoping to get another three years out of it yet before I'll need to think about rebuilding it. The truck itself has three million kilometers on it. That's about 1.8 million miles. The engine has about, what was it, 800,000 kilometers around 500,000 miles since we, it's been completely rebuilt. So it, it's getting there. I'm hoping it can get three more years. We'll see, we'll see. We average, if I run full time the entire year for a full year, you get about 200,000 kilometers in a year, which would be, one sec. Which is that in miles? I always look, I'm gonna translate everything into American. Because I know a lot of you watching are American. Like 50, between 50 and 60% of my audience is based in America. So I like to make sure you guys can understand the measurements and stuff that I'm talking about as well, so that I'm not just speaking foreign to you. Uh, so 200,000 kilometers is a good year. That's, that's a full year. I probably don't hit that because I, I'm regional now, but 200,000 kilometers would be 124,000 miles, just over. So uh, let's say I get about between 100 and 124,000 miles a year. Between 150 and 200,000 kilometers. So it'll be a little over, uh, about a, a million, 1.2. It might be two years. I'm Three years we'd be getting close to, uh, close to 1.5 or 8, 9, 10. Hmm, 1.3 million kilometers or so since the rebuild. So it'll be time. If I If it lasts three years, it'll be time to get it rebuilt again. We'll see, it all depends on the truck. Every truck's different. Everybody treats their trucks differently. Everybody runs it differently. If you're hard on it, it's not gonna last as long. I try to be as nice to her as possible. Give her all the five-star treatments and everything and never open her up too long all the way. Sometimes you just gotta give her, I get it, but you don't wanna just give her every single stoplight, you know? I'm doing my best. Maybe there's some things I could be doing better. I'm doing my best, so let's let's hope that it lasts another three years. 
Okay, anyways, I'm gonna end this vlog here. We're gonna start tomorrow's vlog right here in this spot. We're going to Kenora. I hope you join us. Subscribe so you don't miss it. There's gonna be a lot of trucking content coming in the channel in the next, for the rest of the month. I've had a lot of time off now at home. It's time to get some miles. It's time to get some miles and get out there and get these wheels turning and get these vlogs going, okay? Please do me a favor, hit that like button if you did like it. Helps me out with the algorithms. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. Get to know each other a little bit more. You know me, I don't know you. Tell me something about yourself. I'll talk to you later. Take care and drive safe.